solidly grounded three-phase systems, and ground fault protection. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at solidly or low impedance grounded systems as a baseline, so we know what happens in this system. Then we're going to look at ground fault protection and neutral ground strap, zero sequence and residual ground fault protection, which are all going to accomplish the same end. The majority of electrical installations utilize solidly grounded sources. And what this means is we have a continuous low impedance path to the ground electrode. It is cheap and it is effective. During a ground fault, very large currents will flow from the affected line conductor to ground and back to the source on the ground conductor. And this will, of course, cause the offending circuit breaker to trip, thereby de-energizing the circuit. The larger the KVA of the system, however, the higher the fault current values will be. And even though the breaker will trip, we're still going to result in some damage to equipment. And that can sometimes be in the form of thermal damage or in magnetic stress damage by bending and warping of equipment due to the current. We can also have insulation damage, which can lead to line-to-line -line short circuits and arc flash or arc blast situations. If the source is a generator, further damage can occur as the generator will attempt to supply the high current of the high fault current to the circuit, leading to a runaway condition of the rotating assembly. Now, arcing ground faults draw low current levels, but cause significant damage due to the heat generated. If only two amps is flowing, there's no way that the breaker will trip because it has not met the minimum threshold for the breaker rating. Now the heat developed by this arcing could damage another line conductor that's in close proximity to it, or simply a conductor that's adjacent to or resting near it inside a metal conduit. And if this takes place, we can then end up with a line to line short circuit, which is a much higher intensity than a ground fault. In this situation, the two offending breakers would trip. Ground fault protection systems are put in place to automatically shut down the main overcurrent when a preset ground fault level is sensed. So think of it as a huge GFC GFCI for the main service. Ground fault protection systems use remotely trip breakers and current transformers or CTs. Often, the two items are built together in one unit. Now, for baseline, any electrical circuit, the net total magnetic flux of all the conductors in the circuit will equal zero. And what this means is that zero net flux will result in zero secondary current in a CT or zero current displayed on a clamp ammeter. Now, here's a few examples not meant to memorize this. Here's a single phase two wire. What if you put two wires or bolt them inside the clamp ammeter? You may register zero amps. What if you put all three in there? Zero amps. What if you use a three phase four wire? Guess what? Zero amps. And each one of these is zero amps. And that's because the net or total, the sum of all of the magnetic flux, the vector sum of all of them is equivalent to zero at the very end because we have all the conductors flowing through the same clamp. Things change when we only have one conductor. And that's how we obviously utilize our clamp ammeters. If some of the circuit current travels on a path which does not pass through the CT, the total net magnetic flux sensed by the CT will be greater than zero. And so we'd call that as resultant flux. So in a situation like these two, of course, this is quite expected. We know we're gonna measure this amount of current. This is how we all use an ammeter. And more importantly, if we were to have something like this, where some current is flowing on the ground, the ammeter will register this. Now, what we're gonna do is utilize this basic logic with our ground fault protection systems. We're gonna be passing the conductors through a jaw. And if there's any resultant flux, there's gonna be a secondary current on the CT that should be able to do something for us, such as initiate an alarm. So if we use a large window CT around all the circuit conductors, secondary current developed by the residual flux will operate the remote breaker trip system, often referred to as a shunt trip. Alternatively, we could use a small window CT around the ground conductor and the secondary current developed by the flux 
when there's current flowing through that ground conductor, will operate the remote breaker trip system. So there's three different types of ground fault protection designs, neutral ground strap and zero sequence. Residual is very, very similar to zero sequence. We won't spend nearly as much time looking at it. This is a neutral ground strap uh, ground fault protection. What you can see is there is a single CT and that single CT is actually mounted on the system bonding jumper. It then supplies a relay and the relay then connects to the shunt trip mechanism in the breaker. And the relay and the CT and the shunt trip will all be set to a specific current value in order to initiate the automatic tripping or opening of the circuit breaker. Now I have a few different slides here that just show the process of what happens. So here's the system bonding jumper. That's the relay with the coil and the contacts. And then we have to have some form of a source in order to operate the remotely operated breaker or the shunt trip mechanism. During normal operation, there should be little to no current on the system bonding jumper and CT secondary. When we have a significant ground fault or a value that is above what our rating is, the fault current will travel back on the metal bonding conductors through the system bonding jumper, finally to the neutral, and what that will cause is a value of current to flow in the secondary of our CT. Since current is flowing through the secondary of the CT, it'll cause a voltage to be developed, which should then energize the coil on our relay. The relay coil energizes, closes the contacts, which then applies voltage to the remote trip mechanism in the breaker and opens the breaker, thereby de-energizing the system. Now it's important to understand that the breaker does not automatically reset after the ground fault is removed. Instead, it must be manually turned all the way off and all the way back on. A zero sequence is much the same, and it's simply a larger CT that has all of the circuit conductors inside it. Same idea where there's a relay and a shunt trip unit. In this situation, what we're looking for is an unequal value of current. So during normal operation, there should be little to no current on the CT secondary. Only when the magnetic flux of the system is not equal or zero will any current flow in the CT secondary. In the same way that a clamp ammeter will measure zero amps, fall the conductors of the circuit pass through the jaw, zero amps will flow through the secondary of the CT. So here we have some ground fault current that is not passing through the CT, which causes a resultant flux. This will cause current to flow in the secondary of the CT, which causes a voltage to be developed across the coil of the relay. The relay energizes, closing the contacts and applying voltage to the shunt trip breaker, which opens the breaker. The final one is residual ground fault protection. Very, very similar. It does exactly the same thing, but instead of having one large CT, it has four individual or smaller CTs. Now this style is often built into a ground fault protection breaker. So here is a ground fault protection breaker. It has the CTs inside it and it has settings on the bottom. So all of the shunt trip and the relay and the CT is all built into the breaker itself. And so you would be able to set with a dial cam how many amps and for how long that ground fault current is able to flow before the main breaker trips. We can see here a better picture of it. We have a pickup as in percent and a delay. And the delay is simply the amount of time in seconds before we trip the breaker. The ground sensor we would have to set based on some parameters provided by the manufacturer. Long time, instantaneous, and short time are all different ratings that have to do with the actual function of the breaker, which is uh, its short circuit trip, as in how quickly will it trip on short circuit, as well as time delay for overload. Ground fault protection systems are required by the CEC based on the voltage and current ratings of the system. So 
depending on what the ratings are of the electrical system, you may be required to put ground fault protection uh, in. Starts at 14102. See diagram in Appendix B.